Okay, and now as the saying goes for something completely different. I am working on a font editor. You'll see here this little green window in the top right corner. That is Skia, but there's problems with it. You'll notice, first of all, it's green. It's not supposed to be green. And these are supposed to be glyphs right here, but they're turning yellow. And I eventually realized that it's just happenstance that this works. This program could just as easily crash right now because I did it entirely wrong. I'm kind of just running the commands for this GUI toolkit right in the middle of Skia's rendering pathway. So that's why it's appearing all broken like that. Um, but this is my new font editor project, which I will talk a lot more about soon when I have what I'm going to describe today integrated fully. But let's talk about what I work on today because I finally, finally, finally got it working. And I had been working on it for a few days trying to get this to finally work. So what we're seeing here is the happy face in the background is drawn with Skia. And then this is DRIMGY on the top. So basically it's exactly the same setup as the font editor I just had open. We have Skia drawing the entire canvas in the background, and then we have DRIMGY running on top, and we can fully interact with it, and it's receiving all the events. And so, and I even have it so that we can pass events um, from DRIMGY down to Skia, right? So what I can do with this then is I can stick this in the corner, make it small, like, right? Like, and put a toolbox here. So I know that GUI and Rust is a perennial problem. And so I'm making the code for this available to anybody because I think that this is a pretty good solution to the Rust GUI problem. You know, you have two really powerful uh, toolkits that you can kind of work with together. You know, you have Skia, which can draw any kind of path and it has all kinds of path operations that you can use and it can render text and it, it can do all kinds of crazy stuff. And then you have uh, Dear IMGY, which, you know, is uh, basically windows and uh, menus and all that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I definitely think that this is better than what's in font for to G-Draw, you know. Uh, first of all, it uses the GPU, which almost every computer has one today. And it's much faster to do that. Um, and second of all, it's, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a toolkit. Both of them are toolkits that other uh, people are using. You know, I don't know that I necessarily agree with um, writing an entire toolkit just for my little program here. Like, of course, uh, you saw when I had the font editor open, Obviously, there's a lot of custom code that's drawing all of the um, little squares and uh, direction arrows and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, trying to keep the custom code to a minimum. So having this as a toolkit and then a little layers dialog, or as a toolbox rather, so like a selection, panning, um, you know, drawing, uh, erasing, square, circle, just like in FontForge really. And then having the uh, layers here. So yeah, I'm going to upload this. Um, you'll see it says up here with reclutch. Uh, I'll write in the readme where this all came from, but basically I finally got it working because I found this example in reclutch and I just decided to take the code out of reclutch that I needed, which is like 5% of reclutch, not very much of it at all. And then kind of um, reclutch the way that he designed it, don't, you know, uh, he, he kind of wants it to be agnostic across different uh, backends for drawing. So in Reclutch, you know, you can draw with Skia, you can draw with a bunch of other things. I'm not interested in that. I definitely know that I'm going to be using Skia uh, very at a, like the low level of it. So I pulled out what I needed from there and just made his fields public that referred to Skia's surface and canvas. So anyway, yeah, I will be uploading this and yeah. Uh, I hope somebody gets some use out of it. All right.